I will now start explaining the Jenkins Job DSL. The Jenkins Job DSL is a plugin in Jenkins that allows you to define jobs in a programmatic form with minimal effort. DSL stands for Domain Specific Language. You can describe your jobs in Jenkins using a Groovy based language. Think about Groovy as a scripting language for the Java platform. It's similar to Java, but simpler because it's much more dynamic. It's a scripting language. The Jenkins Job DSL plugin was designed to make it easier to manage jobs in Jenkins. If you don't have a lot of jobs in Jenkins, using the UI is the easiest way. When the jobs amount grow, maintaining becomes difficult and a lot of work. The Jenkins plugin for the Job DSL solves this problem and you get a lot of extra benefits. I explained those benefits in a previous lecture. You can use verge control with it, then you have a history, an audit log, and an easier job restore when something goes wrong. Let's go over an example. Remember the first example that we did in Jenkins using the UI was just to check out the Git repository that contained a Node.js project. What we then did was npm install to install the dependencies of this Node.js project. If we want to translate this in a programmatic language, then you would use the Jenkins job DSL to do that, and it would look like this. This is Groovy syntax. It's a DSL, a domain-specific language that we're going to use. This example is going to create one job based on this code. It starts with job, and then the name of the job, and then we are going to define all the parameters of this job. So the parameters that we are going to use in this job are SEM, SEM, the software configuration management, which version control falls under. Then we have triggers, wrappers, and steps. Let's start with SEM. In SEM, we have defined a Git repository. This is the Git repository that will be used in the job. The Git repository that I showed you with the Node.js example app in is the Docker demo Git repository. The parameters for this Git repository that we are going to use is that we're going to configure a name and an email address. This is then going to be used to configure the Git client on this Jenkins to set the name to DSL user and to set the email address to Jenkins DSL at New Tech Academy. If you wouldn't set these parameters, our job would fail and we'll just say you didn't configure the git name and the git email. So we just need to do this. Jenkins will clone this repository and then we can run commands on that repository. This repository will contain the index.js, the package.json, the files of our Node.js project. Then how many times do we want to build it that we can define in the triggers? We're going to say pull the SCM every five minutes. If there's a change, rebuild this Node.js project. For wrappers, we're going to say that we need Node.js. If we wouldn't define this wrapper, we couldn't use the command node or the command npm. So we're going to say node and the name of our Node.js installation. So we defined this much earlier when we were using manage Jenkins, configure tools, and then we, we, we created a Node.js installation and then we gave it, then we gave it a name. This name was Node.js, and this is the name we fill out here. So once we cloned the GitHub project, what are we going to do? So here we define in steps that we have a shell step, which is going to do the npm install command. npm install will then download all dependencies and make sure that our project is ready to run. In the next demo, I will show you how to run this example in Jenkins.